Today we're excited to announce the release of our integration with Eleven Labs. This means that users can now use their Eleven Labs account inside a closed caption creator for creating audio descriptions and describe video. Now, what is Eleven Labs? Eleven Labs is more than just you know an online text-to-speech tool. Um, it's also a platform that allows you to train your own voices. This means that you can log into the Eleven Labs platform, upload your own audio, train your own voice. And then that voice becomes available inside a closed caption creator for your own projects. Let's jump in and I'll show you how it works. I'm going to switch over to closed caption creator here. I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call this the 11 labs intro. I'm going to choose a video from my hard drive here and I'm going to hit create project. Now by default inside closed caption creator, you'll notice that there's one event group that gets created at the top of the screen here. Um, and you'll notice the CC icon. So that is a closed caption or subtitle event group. What we need to do is we need to create an audio description event group. So I'm going to hit the plus sign here, choose audio description from the drop down, and I'm going to give it a display name of English AD. Perfect. And I can go back here and I can actually delete the first event group because we won't need it for this project. Next, we're going to actually set up the integration with 11 Labs so I can show you how that works. To do that, we're going to come up to the settings icon over here, click settings come to integrations and you'll notice that I have an integration already configured for iconic, but you'll notice that my 11 labs integration is missing an API key. So in order to get your API key, you actually have to log in to the 11 labs dashboard, which will look something like this. Come down to your name, hit profile, and you'll notice here where it says API key, you can click the I icon and copy the API key into your Close caption creator settings. Don't forget to hit save settings before you quit. Perfect. And I'll close this. You don't have to restart the application. The configuration is already configured. That's everything you need right there. In order to check whether it's working or not, you can come down to the quick tools drawer, scroll over to the voices tab and open up the voice manager. If the voices tab isn't visible here, it means that you have to come back to the settings menu, go to your quick tools, uh, menu here and then make sure voices is checked on, right? And then don't forget to hit save settings. Um, some people turn that off when they're not using it. So I'll just hit close here and come back to our voices panel here and I'll open up the voice manager. Now the voice manager is normally where you're going to find all your voices. You can preview them. Um, you can test out new voices for your project before you get started. Um, by default, closed caption creator, the audio description plugin comes with voices from Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. And you're probably used to seeing these voices split up by language, um, meaning that, you know, for Google, they have voices for English, French, Spanish, German. With 11 labs, they don't have predefined languages for each voice, right? They basically have a voice that can be used for multiple languages at one time. And so what we've done is we've added 11 labs to the list of languages here. So you should see this once you've added your API key. And if I switch over to 11 labs, you'll notice that all these voices appear here and you'll notice that they have a, a style, sorry, you'll notice that they have a style tag underneath them. So the default style is basically their default model, which is used for English. And they have a 11 multilingual V2 model for other languages. So if you're using French, Spanish, you'll want to use the 11 multilingual V2 style inside of your project. So I'll show you how to switch between those in a second. First, let's preview some of these voices from 11 labs to make sure that the integration's working. Love doesn't make the world go round. Love is what makes the ride worthwhile. Logic will get you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. Great. I'm going to switch over to some of the female voices as well, so you get a, a, you know, a chance to hear those. Dreams come true. Without that possibility, nature would not incite us to have them. You can't blame gravity for falling in love. Great. And once I'm happy with some of these voices, what I can do is I can pin these. Um, so they'll show up on the, on the side panel here. And I'll, I'll grab a, a male one as well. So I'll grab Drew. And I'll put that here. So you can actually see, um, when I close out of here, any pinned voice is going to show up inside of the voices panel in the quick tools drawer. So that shows up here and it's as easy as, as selecting an event and then selecting a voice in order to update the voice being used. So you can see here, Scarlett is now the, the voice. If I switch over to Drew right now, Drew's the voice and the style 
right? Or the model select is just below that. So you, if you're doing any voices that in French, Spanish, any languages outside of English, you can choose the 11 multilingual um, V2 option here as well for you. Um, by default, it will automatically select the default option. Great. So let's uh, let's try this out. I'm going to come into the the text panel here. I'm going to write uh, some 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 test uh, content. So I'll write "Hello world, how are you? The sky is blue." Great. So just uh, just a little bit of content, and you'll notice right away that the 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 green R lights up, and this is our render button. So the render button will take the text and convert it to audio for us. So I'm going to hit R. Awesome. And now we have um, this event that's already been, that's been, you know, that's been rendered and then the green button goes away. However, we still can't hear this back. So in order to hear this back, we actually need to place it on the timeline. So to do that, I'm going to, you know, mark the in and I can, I can go somewhere else, mark the out if I want to, um, or I can use the scissor icon. So that way it's the proper length. Um, and then I can, I can go back a couple seconds and I can hit play. Hello world. How are you? The sky is blue. Great, and that sounds good. Um, if I want to turn down the program audio, I can just come to the audio controls here and just turn down the, the program audio, so that way I can hear more of the voiceover. Hello world, how are you? The sky is blue. Great, and that's really good. And I can do the next thing. So if I want to create a new event here, um, I can do that. I, I can use the plus sign. Um, so there's, a, there's an add event at the top toolbar. There's this green add event here, and I can also use the shortcut key, um, the tab key, which will automatically insert a new event. Um, and you can see that here. So I can add another description here. A woman walks across a snowy mountain pass. Again, I'll render this out and I'll play it back for you. A woman walks across a snowy mountain pass. What? Perfect. And you can hear the quality of the voice. It's, it's, it's very good, right? And if we compare that to maybe like a Google voice. So if I, if I go back to the voices manager here, I'll just select the first for Google voice. So this is the, uh, the studio Q voice. So I'll pin this here and I'll, I'll just assign this down here and there we go. And I'll re-render this voice for you and I'll play this back for you. A woman walks across a snowy mountain pass. What? Perfect. So you can kind of hear the quality difference between the two voices. Google voices are good too. The 11 labs voices are a little bit better, I think. One of the things I wanted to, to point out um, between, you know, the 11 labs voices and the Google voices and this goes for the Amazon and the Microsoft voices as well, is that they've they've included the ability to to change the rate, so the speed or the cadence that the that the voice speaks at. Um, so with Google, I can I can speed it up, I can slow it down, but if I switch this back over to a you know one of the Eleven Labs voices, they don't have a rate control. They have what's called stability and similarity. So in order to slow down a voice, what I recommend doing is decreasing the stability and maybe raising the similarity up a little bit, right? And so now you'll notice if I hit render here, perfect, and I play this back. A woman walks across a snowy mountain pass. Now that we have part of our project uh, created, I just wanted to go through the export uh, workflow with you as well. So if we're gonna export this project here, we can do that a couple ways, depending on what you want to export. So I'm gonna come up to the export icon here, and I can choose audio description. And what audio description export is going to allow us to do is actually export um, audio files, right? So it'll export the, the voiceover track by itself. If you want to mix that yourself in Pro Tools or, or um, Adobe Audition, you can do that. Um, it, you can also export a completed track. So a completed track will be in a specific format um, with auto mix already applied with loudness processing. So we give you all of these options here. So you'll choose an export profile. So whether it's, uh, you know, MP3, FLAC files, um, PCM wave for, for broadcast, 48K, you can do that. You can export um, the entire project by default, or you can export just a, select, a selection of events. So you can export event 5 to 10 if you wanted to. The other thing you can do is, is in the auto mix settings, you can basically choose the preset that you want to export at. So um, for auto mix, we basically apply ducking and some compression right, in order for the, the voiceover to sit on top of the mix properly. Um, and we can also do things like loudness processing. So if you're a broadcaster in North America, um, you might have to follow uh, certain guidelines, certain rules um, by the CRTC that says you, you know, you have to broadcast within a certain loudness. So we do that here too. So you can actually uh, turn on, you know, voiceover uh, loudness, which will basically normalize the voiceover so that that way it, it doesn't exceed, you know, minus 24 um, lofts or LKFS. Perfect. So I'll close out of that. 
The other option you have for exporting are um, these subtitle profiles. So subtitle profiles, they're not actually subtitle files, though you can export an SRT file if you wanted to of, of your work. Um, what we've done is we've built specific profiles around certain programs. So for example, if I come to CSV, you'll notice here that we have the ability to export our entire project as a queue sheet or a queue list um, that can be imported into the ADR panel in DaVinci Resolve, right? So in the Fairlight workspace, you can actually import that right in and then you can bring in a real voiceover talent to, to voice it for you. So that's kind of a really cool option for you as well. So if you wanna do that, um, you can also export the CSV, bring that in and work on it in DaVinci. So these are all kind of the other options. The last thing I wanted to touch on um, before I finish is now that you have this all set up, um, there's a good question of, you know, why you would use a closed captioning program to do audio description. So we have the audio description plugin, which makes it, you know, that much easier to do your your work, to do your scripts. Um, but we also allow you to do certain things with with subtitles that I think are pretty powerful. So in terms of um, we have what's called automatic transcription or AI subtitles in, is what it's called in some programs. Um, so I can come in here and I can actually import an example uh, transcript that I have here as subtitles into my project. And I can set that as track two. Um, and that allows me to, you know, if I'm going back to my AD, that allows me to see where the dialogue is in my project while I'm doing my while I'm doing my audio description. So that way I know I'm not stepping over any of the dialogue. I can actually see where the dialogue sits so I can position my events around the dialogue. On top of that, we also allow you to generate AD templates from here. So I can actually come in here, go to the event group options and then say, you know, create AD template. And so if I click here, it's going to create a new event group for me, a new audio description event group, right? with events already populated for me. So it shows me exactly where I can basically put my audio descriptions to make it even easier for me, right? And if I make this my my track two and then come back to uh, come back to my AD, that makes it really easy because now I have a, a, a kind of a guide track at the top here that shows me where I need to insert audio descriptions, right? So that makes it really simple. Um, there's some other really powerful workflows, right? You can both work in, you can do your audio description and your closed captioning all in one program. You can do your translation localization as well. Um, so these are all different options, but we're really excited about the 11 labs integration because it really brings some really high quality voices to the program. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our support team. Um, we're here to help. If you want to set up a demo, um, you can also reach out to us. And if you have any feature requests, um, we'd love to hear them. We're working really hard on our audio description plugin to make it basically to make it better and better with every release. Um, so if you have any feature requests, please feel free to connect with us and we'd be happy to, to hear them and, and try and in integrate them um, or implement them into the product. Um, thanks so much. Really appreciate it.